Hi, this is Bill Weither, founder and CEO of Machine Metrics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect your first machine. So first, uh, you'll want to either purchase uh, an Edge device like this, uh, or, uh, or download our software and install on any uh, hardware that you have uh, that's connected to your factory network. And what, uh, what we need to do uh, once you log in is go into Settings, into Edge Management, and add a new device. Okay, the first thing, uh, this will actually use Bluetooth if you're using our Edge hardware. And uh, we're going to connect to this device right here. Uh, it's the same that's on the, the serial numbers on the back of the Edge device. We'll pair that. And uh, once we're paired, uh, this is going to uh, connect and activate the Edge device so that we can then uh, add machines uh, to your account. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we can add this Edge device. And this will then bring up a form where we can um, edit your uh, settings to connect the Edge device uh, to your company network. So you can see here, um, this is already configured with a um, Wi-Fi network. Um, you can put in the, you know, your SSID and your password. This will connect to Wi-Fi. This will be how we connect to our machines, but this also has two Ethernet ports that you can configure here with either um, dynamic or static IP addresses. So now that we have the Edge device connected, let's go uh, back home here and, and actually add the machine. So what we're gonna do is we have this uh, simulator of a CNC machine, and this is a FANUC based control, and uh, we're gonna add that machine uh, to our account here. Uh, so if you click this green button, add machine, we're gonna give it, um, give it a name, it's a three axis mill, uh, type of machine, call it a FANUC, uh, but we're going to just, uh, let's see, nope, sorry, uh, type of machine tool, we're going to call that a vertical mill, and machine make is a FANUC, we're going to accept all the other defaults, add the machine, and then once we add it, we now connect it. So uh, what we do here is, uh, you know, this goes through just what you need uh, on your company network, but we're already set up. Choose the edge device that we just activated, and then we add the new data collection method. So what you'll see here is that there's a number of different data collection methods that we support. The one that we're going to select is FANUC Focus. This is the one that um, the standard FANUC connector. Enter in the IP address, and that's really all you need to do. And we're going to add the data collection method, and then connect the machine. Uh, this here takes uh, just a few seconds. What this is doing behind the scenes is it's uh, mapping all the different data items that it detects from this uh, FANUC based controller uh, to the right uh, uh, data types. And uh, this will allow us to run reports and configure workflows. So let's go accept the defaults here. And, uh, and what that does now, we can see this three axis mill. This takes another couple seconds to start reporting, but I'm going to go ahead and go right into the diagnostics. And what we can see is uh, we have uh, all of these data items that are, that are already mapped. Uh, so we have the device itself, we have the three different axes, uh, X, Y, and Z. We have the, uh, the path here. This, is, uh, this gives you the, um, the program information, the feed rates, uh, different overrides that we can uh, build workflows off of. Um, it's all available for reporting and workflows within Machine Metrics. So the next section is going to be on how we actually use this data. So now that we have our machines connected, I want to take you through the Machine Metrics interface. The first home page that we go to is the machines list. This includes all the machines that are on your factory floor, a real time view in terms of the status, how long it's been at that state. It, uh, it lists the, uh, the current operation, so it's actually uh, what's running on that machine. And then you have some, some data here, such as utilization rate. This is all configurable. There's a number of different views. Um, you can also uh, select your own columns, your order, and uh, build this the way that you want. Um, here we're, we're showing the data in the last 30 days. We can go and you know, change that even to like last seven days, or actually a current shift is a, is a good view here. So um, just to navigate around, there's um, uh, there's really uh, four main sections here. There's the machines area. This is the machines list and, and dashboards. We have reports, some of the out-of-the-box reports. We also have a report builder, so you can build your own. 
We have our production area. This is where you know all of your operations, production runs, operators are managed. And then automations, really, which are workflows. Uh, so I'll touch on each of these areas um, as right now. So we see the machine list here, but let's go ahead. Uh, a very uh, common uh, view is the current shift dashboard. Uh, we, uh, we often see this displayed on big screen TVs across the factory floor. And it really provides this uh, quick, uh, at a glance view of how your machines are performing uh, the shift. Uh, so you can see the top bar of these tiles indicate um, uh, what the machine is doing. So blue is idle, uh, we have yellow is in setup, green is active. Uh, and then the area below really is the performance of the, the current running operation for the shift. So when we're green, everything is good. Uh, but uh, you start falling behind, uh, the color turns amber and red. And that means um, that uh, action needs to be taken. Uh, we're not meeting the goal that's been set for the current shift. So moving on from there, uh, we have um, a lot of uh, really great data is in the reports. Uh, what I'd, li I'd like to highlight our downtime report. So uh, often, you know, when our machines are running, our customers like to uh, to understand why machines go down, and uh, this can be tracked, uh, you know, through uh, through our operator interface. And you can see the results of that through this uh, downtime Pareto. So here's a Pareto of just the last day, and we can see there's um, you know, a fair amount of unplanned maintenance. And we can actually see the you know, these downtime reasons of what happened um, and uh, drill into this as well. So let's go ahead and you know, I've noticed that there's um, a, you know, a bit of downtime here, 17 minutes for an unknown reason. If I drill into this, we can actually see our timeline and maybe get an idea of what uh, of, of what happened. So here's this downtime event here. Zoom in on this. Uh, I don't see any alarms. You know, this happened right after a part cycle. Um, so the machine must have um, it didn't fall out because I'm not getting that. But um, but it is down for for some reason. So you know you can see you know alarm that happened after. Maybe it's a bar feeder alarm because we're seeing that. And this gives you that full insight into into this into this machine. We can go into the diagnostic timeline and, and kind of view, you know, have a, like a little bit of a deeper view. On um, this diagnostic timeline, um, this can give you uh, a view into, you know, other inputs. Um, so, you know, anything that's available in the machine data, we have available here. You know, you can even you know, display things like, uh, let's look at this, look at the spindle load, or we can look at uh, tool numbers. That information, you know, if it's available in the machine data, it'll be available in uh, to display right here. So moving on, uh, we have uh, another very popular report is the utilization report. This is uh, this can be used to look at your utilization rate of all of your machines over time and the various trends. Uh, here uh, we're looking at just over the past week, but let's look at weekly utilization year to date. So, you know, I might be able to see a trend in this data. Uh, looks like I can see a slight upward trend through March. Maybe it's come back down in April and coming back up. Uh, we can even like look at this by shift. You know, maybe I want to just focus on the first shift. That's where you know, I run my machines most frequently. And then we, we have this broken down by, by shift, by machine group, machine summary, or uh, individual machines. You know, the data is all here and you can export that and use it in the, some of your own Excel reporting if you wish. Uh, so the, we also have um, I'll point out the report builder. The report builder is a, is a pretty powerful uh, tool, which it really is uh, business intelligence built right into machine metrics. So you start out here, you can select any kind of data item, you can group it or pivot it um, by uh, by these uh, these here, and then they create any filters. So I'm going to show one that's um, that's already loaded here, that's saved, and we're going to look at a cycle time analysis. So by pulling this up. What this does, if I look at the controls, this selected utilization rate, time and cycle, uh, OEE performance, and, uh, and part times. We're grouping that by machine, by operation, and day. And uh, we can see here how this data is laid out. So just drilling in, uh, you can look at each machine. You can look at the operation on that machine. And you know, drilling in a little bit further, we can, we can actually see um, this is by day. And, uh, and we can get a sense of not only the utilization, but we selected uh, the, the actual part-time versus the expected part-time. This is a really good way to, to update um, cycle time standards if we're running faster or slower um, than, than what's been set as a standard. 
Yeah. So this operational data does exist in, in the production area here. This is where uh, we have uh, access to all of our operations. Uh, we have our, our standards. Each production run is displayed here. And, uh, and then we have um, this section on automations, which is, uh, which is workflows. Now this is really powerful. Uh, what this allows you to do is uh, trigger action, you know, based on certain machine conditions or operational conditions. You can see some that are um, already set up here. Uh, we have, um, uh, these are, our, uh, I can show these, these are manual workflows that are buttons on the operator interface. Uh, we can also add new workflows. So for example, let's add, um, uh, let's add one when, uh, let's see, our trigger, let's see if downtime is inspection of parts. Let's say like this is a call uh, quality and the action would be a notification. We'll send that notification right away. Give that this uh, generic user. And what this will do is it'll create a notification when the downtime is due to inspection of parts. Uh, there's, uh, there's the other actions that we have, not only a notification, but you can send an, a message to the operator interface. Uh, there can be a webhook that can tie into a third party system. Uh, and uh, and also you can you know, take action on the operation to start to start or stop a, a new job. So the next thing I'd like to really uh, show here is um, is the operator interface. So here, if we go to the op dash, this is what um, you commonly see as a touch screen uh, right in front of the machine. And um, let's go ahead and plug in here. And what um, and this is uh, also a configurable interface uh, that, that will show you, um, you know, these various tabs here, um, information on your parts, your utilization, uh, your, your current cycle time. You can even add your own custom tab if you wish and have this uh, display like work instructions, for example. So this is, uh, so this is uh, an example also where I want to show you the workflow buttons that we included here. Uh, so we have uh, workflows. These are completely configurable where you might want to um, create a maintenance request. So you can say maintenance has been notified based on that workflow and, uh, and we'll have maintenance come over here in a few minutes. So this is also where you can, uh, this, you can select a new operation. So if you have a legacy machine where you're not getting operational data from the machine, you can use the operator interface to, to select that operation, uh, to create that new operation if it didn't already exist but we can also uh, categorize downtime here. So if I go to a machine that um, is already down, uh, we'll be able to see this um, pop right up. So this is already asking the operator why this machine is down. It's been idle for a while, it's been three hours. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and call that a machine fault and uh, submit that downtime. So now that will exist in the, in the downtime parade up. So there's a, you know, this is your, your quick overview of machine metrics. There's a lot more that you can do, but hopefully this provides some insight into some of the basics.